No hair. No jaw. <laughs> he, he lost his hat. <laughs> He's, um... He sleeps on the ground. Oh, yep. that stupid hat, bro. Love that. <laughs> the hat I that clips through oh his God. face. Yeah. I... I need to find that in the lighthouse. I need to find all his stupid outfits. <laughs> oh my like... gosh. Yes, I need other outfits so I can start seeing artists draw him in like actual different outfits that he's actually worn. <laughs> no, I want my Rook to wear them and just... Oh. <laughs> dude, <laughs> that's even better. Enter the Fade talk to him and be like, Dude, what the hell is this? Yeah, he's like, excuse me? What's it now? <laughs> Are you in my closet, bro? Are you snooping? <laughs> He did steal oh, yeah, we're my, totally my Inquisitor's gear. He did steal that. Very true. I, some people, <laughs> oh man, it'd be hilarious off? if there's just some random, like, well, I know the thing is you can't pick your class anymore, but, like, there's gotta be just some, like, random weapons lying in a freaking corner or something. Maybe under the, the Inquisitor's shrine. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be. We were talking yeah. earlier about um, how we started, uh, when we started Inquisition and stuff like that. So what what enticed you guys? Why did you decide to romance Solus instead of one of the other companions? How come he became your main romance? Okay, so initially I wasn't sure who to romance because I, I liked all of the companions, but not as much as I liked, for example, Alistair or Fenris. So I wasn't sure who to romance, but because I, I got into the games pretty late, I had already seen loads of spoilers. So I already mm. knew Solus was the actual antagonist of the game. I didn't have any context. I just knew, oh, there's more to this guy. So I was like, wait, you can romance the bad guy? That's, I have to do that. I gotta see that. And so I, I decided to romance Solas, and now I'm stuck in Sol of Ellen Hell. <laughs> <laughs> you made your decision before even getting into it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the reason why it stuck with me was just because of Solas's whole personality and how he knows so much about the fate, and he's just, he's just an interesting character, really. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What about you guys? So for me, oh man, I am... Um, I started the game blind. I've told the story, I think, once before. Um, I had a friend at the time. They introduced me to Dragon Age, and they put me on an Inquisition. And um, Solus is one of the first few people you meet in the game really early on. And I've always been an elf girl. I just love elves. And at that point, the only other character I was interested in was Varric, and my friend was like, oh, you can't romance him. So I was like, well, okay then. So we meet Solus, and she's like, oh, you can romance him. Keep in mind, she knew the whole time that he was the antagonist and was going to break my heart, but she encouraged <laughs> it anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was kind of pushed into it, but um, I really just loved the way he talked and how he was kind of, you know, he was flirtatious pretty early on and just like those those subtle lines of things he was saying. And I personally really love intelligence. And I was like, oh, you know, he knows a lot. He's, he's telling me stories and stuff. I like stories. And I've always said I'm a huge fan of his voice. His voice is one of my favorite parts of his character. The thing that stuck with me, um, I remember it was the right after the fade kiss scene. He basically tells you to wake up right after and then and then it turns out you were basically dreaming and th that whole scene is just was like oh my gosh this is amazing i can't believe i was in a dream the whole time like it was just like this shock factor for me and yeah i've been in love ever since so <laughs> it's adorable yeah it's a great scene. um it is so the way i decided to run solace as uh, i didn't um i originally <laughs> started I started up Inquisition, the first uh, Dragon Age game I ever played. Uh, no idea what I was doing. Didn't even know romances were a thing until I saw a heart option pop up and I'm like, ooh, that's <laughs> cool. So I played a human mage the first time I played and I, I was like, oh, I love Josephine. She's lovely, blah, 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 blah. And then I continued on a little bit into the game, still at Haven, and I just talked to Solus and I'm like, He's wonderful. He keep he keep talking. I've run out of talking <laughs> options. Okay, I can't choose heart options with him. I wonder if he's romanceable. I should probably look that up. And then I found out he's exclusive to female elves, and I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna have to go remake <laughs> oh. my character. <laughs> so yep, remade my character, and the rest is history. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that you just went and made a whole new character for him. That's so real. <laughs> that is dedication. Right. <laughs> I did have a similar experience where when I decided to actually romance Solas, I was already past the initial scene, the dream scene, and I did not choose the romance option at first because I didn't realize that you had a lock-off point, and then I realized, mm. oh, you can't romance him anymore if you're past that point. So I, I reloaded back uh, 
quite a few hours <laughs> to before reaching Skyhold to start a romance. Do not regret it, though. <laughs> oh, no, definitely. I wouldn't either. He's worth it. Oh, absolutely. He waits, several, <laughs> he waits several thousand years for me. I can wait a couple hours for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the coolest thing I've ever said. <laughs> That was great, that was great. <laughs> and it's also just the fact that he turns out to be, like, not only the antagonist, but also a freaking elven god. Yeah. It's just... Mm. I The fact that his romance is so tied to the main narrative and the narrative mm. of the elves, because I also love elves. I am obsessed with elves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the fact that his romance is so tied to the main narrative makes it also all the more interesting to me. Because... To me, Solus's romance is like Morrigan's romance in Dragon Age Origins and Alistair's romance to an extent, as well yeah. as Anders' romance mm -hmm. in Dragon Age 2, because it's just, it's so important to the main narrative. Yeah, I was going to say literally the exact same thing. I, um, that was one of the main reasons why I loved his romance so much is because it's so tied to the main story. It makes you feel more important. Like, you're already really important in Inquisition. You're, you could be a religious symbol, you're leading people out of <laughs> a world ending crisis um, but on top of that you know if you play a level and you romance solace you're also you know the love interest of the freaking freaking fenrell dude <laughs> like it's so awesome you're so tied to like the actual lore of the world and it's yeah mm -hmm. i was just adding to what you're saying it, it's great mm, yeah and it had to be the wolf god to the cool yeah. wolf god yeah, and it's not just that. It also the romance also says a lot about who Solas is as a character. And if you romance him, you're part of the reason why he changes his mind on how he views people in modern Thetas, because he views everyone as just tranquil. And now because right. he met mm -hmm. you, I think it also does that when you're friends with him. But especially if you romance him, he's like, well, if she is real, that means other people could be real. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just love that. <laughs> the fact that you can mm. actually change a god's mind. You know, you're just this. Well, in this case, you're just this mortal elf woman, and you happen to change one of the <laughs> biggest influences in elven history. You change his mind. Mm. That's just incredible. Yeah, I love that. When you have a character as, I guess, phenomenal as Fen Harrell within the lore, and then you see him presented to you as just this dude. He's just a guy. He's doing things. He's got a lot more going on, but like he does an Inquisition you... Sure, every version of the Inquisitor can see a side of him that is unique to them, but with the romance, you see this very soft, very vulnerable side of him mm -hmm. that you don't really see otherwise. You, Especially with the... I think I did a rant about it the other day, uh, as you do, about the, the Fade kiss scene. Yep. Where... Essentially, that the point of that scene was him. You get to that point by asking him about himself to the point where he has no more answers for you. So he's like, okay, well, I'll just show you. So he takes you there and he, he what he does is he tells you what his flaws and vulnerabilities is. He's, he tells you, I tried to help. I failed. I was going to run. I was going to run as far away as possible. He's just telling you, I'm a coward. My plans are terrible. And yeah, I don't handle pressure very well. And for a Lavellan to just go up to him and welcome his flaws with love, with a kiss, and ugh, it just makes me so warm inside. Yeah, <laughs> right. Especially so when, good. Yeah, it, to just get to see that part of his character, especially, I don't know how to explain it very well, but it just speaks to something very deep inside you that says, yeah, no matter how flawed you are as a person, look at this, the trickster god Fen Harrell and all the crap he's done. He can be vulnerable and someone can still love him. And that's just, that's really comforting. He knows she, <laughs> she loves him for who he is, besides him being a god. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. true, that's huge. Yeah. I saw, I can't remember where I saw it, but someone was saying the other day is that Sol Solus in Inquisition for the first time probably his entire life wasn't Fen Harrell. Yeah. He was, he's just Solus. And perhaps maybe he forgot that as well. And I'm like, oh, oh. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love him. He's so difficult to explain. That um, is one of the reasons time. that makes him so lovable. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And interesting. Yeah. 
it it must have been like very hard for him as well to realize that he was falling for someone that he at first didn't consider an actual person, just a yeah. trifle. It's probably in denial for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, his mindset was probably so different before he met everybody. Mm. And also the fact like I don't know, I want to think that it probably took longer than just like I don't know. I guess there's no no clear time consistency like i don't know how long it was like for example from when solace and the inquisitor first met to when they get to haven and uh solace kind of i mean not kind of he starts flirting with the inquisitor you know like i feel like that's i don't know i'm trying to decide if you know do you think his mindset was changing at that point or is he like testing the waters kind of thing or i don't know it's really interesting yeah I feel like it started off as just, you know, nothing serious. He was like, oh, okay, well, this, this is funny. This tranquil is funny. person is, is, I'm flirting with this tranquil person, but then he realizes, oh, wait, wait a second. Hold on, I'm, I'm actually starting to have feelings for her. Um, shit. Funny. Right. <laughs> she, she walks away after he, he gives the, the flirt line and he's just like, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's a weird thing to try and pinpoint, yeah. I decided, in my head, I've decided the point where he decided it was real was sometime around after Skyhold. It just feels correct. Maybe around his personal quest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because there is a moment where, that's after the first kiss, when you just arrived at Skyhold, where you can... You can confront him about it, and he's like, well, I'm not sure about this, and then you can give him mm. some time to think about it, mm -hmm. and I guess between then and somewhere around his personal quest is when he realizes what's going on, <laughs> and that's right. when he makes up his mind. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah, I'd say so too. What I find interesting is how we can kind of see his internal conflict during the breakup scene, because he obviously has a choice to make. Either he stays with Lavellan and chooses this life here, or he breaks up with her because he can't take her with him, yeah. and he doesn't want her to see what he's going to become. And he, mm. he chooses to continue his plans to bring down the veil, so that must have been a really hard choice for him, but that also shows us how serious he is about this and how how badly he want to fix his mistake. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he gave up literally the love of his life, somebody who actually loved him. And I know that he you know, in Trespasser, he's like, well, what was I supposed to tell you? You know, I'm <laughs> I'm the, I don't remember the exact words, the, basically that I'm this adversary from your, you know, folklore, pretty much. And she's like, you know, well, I would have had you trust me. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I guess mm -hmm. I could have. <laughs> yeah. But um, even yeah. still. At the same time, he was about to tell her. I think it was yeah. Trick Weeks that once said it, but during the breakup scene, he's actually about to tell her the truth, and then he chickens out and tells her about the Valisleen instead. Yeah, you can kind of hear it just slightly, where he's like, his tone kind of changes in it. Very slight change, but it's definitely there. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that scene too. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> do you guys do... Ang I, can't, I can't remember if I've asked, but do you guys do angry, sad, or... How do you guys resolve that scene? Um, I I always go with the sad. Uh, for me personally, I, my Inquisitor's not very angry. Uh, she's very in love with Solus. Thought they were gonna be together basically forever. And mm. yeah, so love that. It's the more sad, the better. <laughs> yeah, I also go for the sad option as well because I imagine my Lavellan just being very confused about what is happening. And it's right. first we're we're hugging and kissing, and now you're like, this has got to stop. And she's like, what? She's just confused and sad, so... Total mood shift, like, and especially because the whole Valis Lane thing, like, I, I, it's not purposeful, but I feel like, for me, I end up, like, putting my own insecurities on my characters by accident, <laughs> like, projecting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after he took off her Valis Lane, that's something that was super, a big part of her. And then he's all of a sudden, like, um, we can't do this anymore. And so she's probably, like, you know, is it me? Like, I... I feel awful kind of thing and now that I look different you don't want to be with me kind of thing and I feel like for me in that situation that would be a very emotional and vulnerable thing to have to go through and that would make me sad so <laughs> yeah mm. oh yeah <laughs> I, was about to I, I go aggressive <laughs> <laughs> I, I go aggressive because that's just that's just my love Ellen yeah that's yeah. cool though I like the aggressive response really it's really well 
It's really good. I like, I like it when I like it when she hits him for it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. And he's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I deserve that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I feel like in a way that's easier for him when she's angry at him. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. He doesn't get the easy route in my game. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little easier for him to be like, well, you know, she's angry. She's, you know, petting me. So that's, I can kind of, it can be a little easier. I still think it'd be hard for him. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I made her so angry. But yeah, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah it's probably I think... easier for him if she hates him versus right. her. I mean, she's still mm -hmm. brokenhearted, but I guess her being angry is easier than her being sad because of him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I like the response, um, whatever you need we can find together, and he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's easier for him to deal with an angry Le villain because that's understandable, but the moment she says, no, I want to, I, I know this isn't coming from nowhere, blah, 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 like, when she's, right. she understands, I think he's like, damn, that's, sh sh I could tell her, but no yeah if even after all this she is not angry at me how is she gonna react when i tell her the actual truth and that is what he's really yeah. afraid of that she's gonna be like oh no i want to join you sure let's do it yep exactly uh, that's like, yeah. it's something he really doesn't want mm -hmm. i love that that's an option in trespasser too is that exclusive to a romance la villain asking to join him or is that just uh you need to be positive with him i think that's just positive, I'm pretty sure. I think you can offer to join him even as a friend. I'm not sure. Mm. I've never finished a game with not romancing Solus, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, only reason I say this, I think I've seen a clip of someone who romanced Dorian and their Inquisitor also wanted to go help Solus and mm. that conversation kind mm. of transpired. Okay, yeah. It might be worded slightly differently. Mm. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while, but I do remember them being able to ask that at the very least. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like uh, it seems like it is friends as well as romance. Okay. Wait, no, you can ask if you've got a lower profile. Uh huh. Oh. Uh, give me a minute. Sure. You two, you two discuss. I'll <laughs> um, <laughs> do do some deep research real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be back in like two hours. It's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. We'll be here. <laughs> yeah, I know. When you have low approval with him, and he asks you, like, do you want to hear the whole story? And you can be like, nah, just give me the short version. And he's, like, he's just, just okay, this and this and this. These are the facts, and this is what I'm doing. Yep, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. I, I've never done that myself, but I love it when other people do it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a clip of it. <laughs> so, you can ask Solus to join him with low approval, and this is his response. Uh, I think he's just more, like, Ooh. aggressive about it. Interesting. Okay, he, yeah. He doesn't, yeah. He's not sympathetic, he's just more aggressive. He says, for our listeners, uh, would you give the life of every friend you've ever known? And there is no glory here, only a price that I alone will pay. This was part two of the Solovellan Vilgar talk with Cassidy and Lady Solovine. Thank you both so much for inviting me to have this chat with you guys. I had a lot of fun and you guys are awesome. And to everyone else, thank you so much for watching. You can find part 1 of our chat on Lady Sullivan's channel and part 3 on Cassidy's channel. And make sure to subscribe to both of them if you haven't already. Their content is awesome and I highly recommend you give it a watch. That is it for now though, thanks again for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. <laughs> no, I want to find her arm somewhere. <laughs> I, want, I want to be behind the behind the shrine. It's just like a little slot, and then you just pull out. <laughs> Ew! Oh my gosh! Imagine Emmerich, Emmerich, oh, Emmerich, yeah. we summon the Inquisitor by asking oh. Emmerich, "Can you reattach it?" Or it's something? like the the hand from Wednesday by the Saint Inquisitor's hand. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's just Emmerich where he he animates the Inquisitor's hand. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> If that means uh, I can bring it, it with me as a pet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like us from Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh. I would love that. <laughs>